Welcome to the course Environmental Impact Assessment. In the previous lecture, we covered, uh, we looked into Environmental Impact Assessment, EIA, we looked into its definition, we briefly looked into process and the purpose, the key purpose of EIA. And today we will look at different impact areas we uh, generally look into through the EIA process what it really addresses, which are the different, different impact areas which we cover through EIA. The key reference for this lecture is chapter 10 from Glasson and Terrible book, which is our textbook for this course. So for today, our coverage would be the typology of environmental impacts. So we will look at various types of impacts which are there. Then we will look at various impact areas. And today our, we will discuss the biophysical impact. So out of all the impacts, we are going to focus into biophysical impacts. So accordingly, the expected learning outcome include that after going through this, you should be able to identify the type of environmental impacts, you should be able to list prime EIA impact areas and then further you should be able to identify and list various uh, biophysical impacts among all the impacts, you should be able to identify and list them. Let us first look at the typology of environmental impacts. Environmental impact can vary um, in like it can vary in type, it uh, the impact can be biophysical in nature, which we are going to look at today. Um, like uh, one would be seeing what kind of impact happens on air, what kind of impact happens on soil, land and geology, um, as well as on water, flora, fauna and biodiversity. So these are all what we are looking at is like biophysical in nature. and. Uh, Likewise, you can also look into the noise level, landscape and the visual assessment. So all of these cover like biophysical um, characteristic of the environment. So by this we understand what type of uh, impact we are looking at. There can also be socio-economic impact where we look at the social impact and then we also look at economic impact or the health impact. So they are a different nature of impact we are looking at. So uh, by looking at these, we understand the typology. Impact, when we see, can be both direct and indirect. So uh, for example, direct impact of a project could be air pollution or water pollution, which may further indirectly impact the health of the people. Uh, living in the influence area, whatever is the project's influence area, so where people are living and eventually your project is impacting the water or the air and then indirectly impacting the people who live there. And this can happen due to the exposure, to the uh, contaminants, the pollutants which build up in the food chain and so on. So that could be direct and indirect Im impact. So you need to look at like what kind of impact you're looking at. Or we can also think of water withdrawal by an industry, so looking at another example which may directly impact the biophysical environment like lowering the water level. The status of the water level uh, could be lower here and have indirect socio-economic influence like lowering of the water level may lead to the um, lowering of the harvest level of the farmers in the influence area. The impact can also be cumulative in nature, meaning project may, may not have significant impact at the individual level. So when you look at one individual project, then it might not have that kind of impact. But when you look at them all together uh, with other developments which would come in some time or in the same region may have significant impact on the receiving environment. So. Uh, Example of this could be like uh, deforestation like you have seen in the previous uh, week that how, how what kind of deforestation is happening. So deforestation resulting from plot by plot clear, clearance. So when you look at one plot it might not be really that significant but when you look at a cumulative manner we, which you look when you look at in totality it would be leading to large scale of deforestation. Another example uh, which we can look at is uh, the number of development in an area with the future projects. 
like uh, traffic levels may increase and result in additional increase in noise level in the communities. So uh, you might be calculating only for your project, but then there might be other projects also coming up and then the cumulative impact would be greater than what you're projecting from one uh, of the projects. So you may see cumulative noise level for those communities under study is uh, extensive. Further, we see that um, uh, when we talk about cumulative, meaning having over a longer period of time, uh, the impact can be different magnitude or severity, such as high magnitude, moderate or low magnitude. So here we see um, example like air pollution must be happening, but at low levels. So if a project air pollution is happening, it's within the standards, then uh, it might be acceptable range compared to a high level of pollution. So magnitude would also vary. Likewise, how severe is the impact is also looked into. For example, a toxic pollution in soil causing leprosy and increase in noise causing headache or irritation. So you can think about like how severe is the impact, which one would be severe and which would uh, you would uh, let it go. So similarly, the impact can be at different geographical extent. So it can, the impact can be at the local level. So uh, whatever you, uh, activities are undertaking, uh, the dust produced in that could be at the local level or the air pollution which is happening can go beyond uh, at the regional level or you are interfering with some um, ecosystem then it can be at the regional level or it can ha also have if water body if w at what level you construct the dams and other structure can also Im impact the transboundary or the industries together can also have global impact like accidents and other things can also go at the global level. Further, we also look at the timing of the project like we can uh, see that the impact can be immediate or it can be long term as well. For example, um, uh, there could be certain kind of impact which uh, happen immediately at site. Uh, like an increase in noise level because of the project uh, that co uh, could be uh, causing irritation. So uh, that's immediate like it would happen from the project from the immediate level whereas the toxic pollution what is coming from any kind of uh, project may have deformed childbirth for several generation. So here we are also seeing that what kind of impact will it be like a temporary impact for a shorter period of time during the construction period or otherwise the impact would go from generation to generation. So that also we see that what kind of impact would be uh, long term or short term. Further looking at the nature of impact, when you evaluate the impact, you also look at the duration of the impact. So whether the impact will be temporary or it will be permanent, of, uh, permanent in nature. So uh, looking at this, you see that impact can be of only temporary in nature or uh, temporary in nature. For example, rise in air pollution. Uh, at the time of construction, if some building is being constructed or there's a road construction taking place. So at that time when the air pollution takes place, then that is temporary in nature which will go away after that activity has stopped. Whereas there can be some permanent increase in air pollution level due to increase of the traffic flow. So when a road is constructed, so during the construction there might be a short term dust uh, pollutant there, but uh, when the road is constantly in the functioning way, so the uh, ambient noise level of that particular area would permanently change. So uh, wh while you see all these kind of uh, impacts and then typology, you also see um, you, uh, when you uh, make uh, these impacts, you also predict and uh, it, all the impacts are related with prediction, there is certain level of uncertainty. So when you are looking at this typology, then you also see what level of certainty is there in the projection which has been made.
So we need to know what are the likelihood, like it's a low likelihood or high probability of that impact which is going to occur or you're predicting projecting to occur. So, uh, there are certain kinds of uncertainty in impact prediction. For example, you have scientific uncertainty. So, you have limited understanding of the ecosystem or the community affected. So, uh, we really do not know much about those things. So, that is why there is like what kind of projection you make, prediction you make that has certain scientific uncertainty. Then also in your uh, prediction there can be data uncertainty. So, uh, you might not really have complete information or your methodology could be insufficient. So, there are always these kind of limitation in the process. Further, there is also like policy uncertainty. So, um, uh, there can be uh, unclear policies or there can be uh, conflicting uh, objectives of different people involved or there can be absence of standards or they can be change in standards. So, these kind of uncertainties are there whenever you do things. So, uh, that also you need to take in perspective while we you evaluate the impact like what kind of impact it is. Further, we see that um, the reversibility or irreversibility of the project. For example, loss of vegetation can be reversed like with plantation. So, whenever you are making a project, for example, we take the road project and for that we are going for certain cutting of trees, but eventually if that loss, that loss can be compensated by planting more trees. So, that process, the impact can be reversed. But when uh, uh, there is loss of endangered species, that particular uh, impact could not be reversed. So, that would be irreversible loss. So, when you evaluate those things, so which one would you really emphasize more? So, the one which you are able to reverse or one which you are not able to reverse. So, definitely where you are not able to uh, uh, reverse the process that would have much more um, weightage when you are analyzing the impacts. So, based on these significance of the impact, so uh, while you look at all these aspects and based on all these significance, uh, the impact is evaluated whether it is important or not important, what type it is, uh, how, when it will happen, what is the likelihood of its happening and what is the certainty involved in this. So, viewing all these, taking all these in context, you decide, you may make decision of the significance of the impact. And uh, not only this, you also look at the sensitivity of the receiving environment. So, when we call, say sensitivity, that means we say what, what is the uh, receiving capacity of any environment, maybe um, uh, a person from a different economic background uh, would uh, the same uh, increase in the price or the change in the lifestyle would uh, be uh, expensive for that person. or. Uh, for uh, same travel distance for um, women would create another problem or uh, blockage of any access road would create problem for certain people who are walking or old age people. So, sensitivity of the receiving environment or the community is also important while you consider the significance of any impact. So, we saw the typology of impact. So, we finished that particular section and how we determine significance of an impact. Now, we'll look at EIA impact areas. So, what are the areas which are usually taken uh, and within EIA and following those Im uh, impact areas are considered. So, uh, so, we saw the typology of impacts and how we determine significance of an impact. Now, we'll look at various EIA impact areas. So, we, we see that uh, the impact areas include the biophysical impact, which we are going to cover today. Then, it also includes socio-economic impact, then also health and safety, economic and fiscal impact. Uh, we also see indigenous people's rights and traditional areas emerging impact areas, then also um, uh, there are some uh, wider impact considerations which are upcoming. So, uh, we'll be uh, in our part one, we are going to only look at so today the biophysical impact areas. So, looking at what all is usually considered under biophysical impact, we look at air, soil, 
land and geology, water, we look at flora, fauna and biodiversity, we look at noise, transport uh, and landscape, we also look at the visuals. Each one of them will be covering in detail in the method section also. So right now it is only for uh, to give an overview of what all impacts are considered. Uh, each one of them will be considered in detail in the methodology section. So we had looked at the environmental status of air and what kind of problems uh, we are facing and to what extent. So we saw that how air quality is going down despite improvement. So you, uh, if you recollect those uh, sessions, when we uh, assess impact, so when we are evaluating the impact on air, what do we really look at? We look at key air pollutants like what is the nitrogen oxide level, sulf sulfur dioxide level, ground level ozone and particulate matter. So we uh, look at these areas. There are uh, like legal standards, how, how do you really know what is more or less and then there are legal standards for these and other air pollutants at, as well at the national and international levels by the World Health Organization WHO. Uh, within air sometimes as per the legal requirements uh, it might vary from country to country and also sometimes country may also include order uh, uh, that uh, you might have to consider in the impact assessment. So impact assessment for air quality is very well established under EIA process. So uh, we, we see that they have a very good mythology and all the uh, standards are in place in most of the countries. So uh, under soil, land and geology, uh, we cover like we look into land use change, we look into soil availability and the quality of soil. And then we also look at the geological designation like what types are there and then geological resources example like what, what resource we get sand, gravel deposit which are there and geological formation that uh, like would constrain or facilitate the project or if anything goes happens and how the entire area would behave. So these things are looked into while considering the soil, land and geology. So we generally see that the impact on land are usually cumulative. So if you'll, uh, you live in various places, so you will see that whenever the impact happens on land, it's usually cumulative, it happens for a longer period of time and it happens with all the other um, activities simultaneously going in the place. Um, and what, what when we say it uh, usually happens in a cumulative manner, meaning it occurs over time. For example, how developed area uh, witness gradual urbanization. So anything you have in one place, it would attract other activities and then eventually the place would grow and it would happen gradually in some due course in time. So uh, when uh, we do this, uh, we look at larger perspective and uh, when we assess uh, the impact on soil, we look at the soil contamination. So we are exactly looking at the hardcore characteristics of the soil. So we look at the soil contamination, erosion, compaction, sealing and the cumulative removal of organic matter. So if you will see the difference between the two, when you are studying the land, you are looking at the kind of land use, what is going on and how it is uh, other use are coming in. And when you are looking at the soil, you are looking at the characteristics involved in that and then the quality of those characteristics. So while reviewing impact on geology, we look at uh, like when we do that removal of geological layers and changes to the geomorphology. So uh, when we do certain kind of projects, how, how those geological layers are going to change or what will happen to the entire geomorphology there. So in general, this domain has been not covered very well in the EIA process. So when you see this uh, uh, geomorphology aspect, that is not really covered a lot in EIA process. So there is uh, still uh, evolving area. While looking at uh, water, um, when we look at water component uh, uh, for e environmental impact assessments, we look at both the water quality as well as water quantity. So when we are assessing water in our um, EIA procedure, uh, we look at both 
quality and quantity. Water also acts as a base environment for many specific areas. So if you see that water is connected to a lot many other things like fresh water, brackets and marine. Furthermore, um, it also leads to indirect impacts. So like whatever will happen to water, it will have impact on the flora and human health. Water can also cause uh, erosion, flooding on land so that it can lead to other impact on other resources as well. So most of the countries follow standards for quality of for drinking water, um, wastewater, bathing water and so on. So you can look in the Indian context also the CPCB provides all the st uh, standards. There can be limitation on the volume of water withdrawal also. So capping can also be done for that. C countries and different regions can cap that as per the context. And uh, uh, the uh, limitation can also be uh, give, given based on the area as well as as per the seasons to protect the water quality and also the aquatic ecosystems. So now looking at flora, fauna and biodiversity while we are reviewing at the uh, biophysical uh, environmental impact assessment. Um, it is a very vast topic. So what we are talking about here, uh, it's, it's very wide in range, it's very complex and covers like birds, fish and mammals and also the conditions under which uh, they nurture like how, what really helps them to grow such as uh, biomass, you can think of the vegetation and um, other species, variations. Uh, so all, all these get co are covered under this topic. Also there are indirect impact of air, water and soil quality. So all the other things also impacted. So uh, there are uh, like in order to protect that there are interventions at international level. And uh, despite these intervention, we see that a lot of loss and decline is happening as we had already seen in the previous uh, week. Because of its, uh, we also see that it's very complex. Now you can see how it's connected with air, water and soil as well as there's wide variety. So because uh, that's why the, it's very complex and it's also interconnected and then it's connected with food web, nutrients flow. Uh, and then uh, even the climate change. So uh, uh, this is very complex and because it's very complex, uh, it's uh, like it is said to be poorly covered in the EIA process. So uh, we are now increasingly considering uh, ecosystem services also, uh, which ecosystem services means the benefit which we get from the ecosystem. It is relatively new area and it is gaining attention. So we are going to look uh, into it in couple of uh, sessions as well. Further, we also consider noise, uh, noise in EIA process. So considering noise, noise can damage human health and their well-being. Noise interferes with communication, uh, increases stress, disturbs sleep, uh, there are a lot of health uh, impacts which happen and can lead to high blood pressure, also increased stress level, reduced efficiency and increased risk of heart attack. So all these problems uh, uh, can happen, health problems can happen and uh, noise also affects wildlife, so not just uh, the um, human health but it also affects the wildlife and uh, vibration can affect building stability also. So it, it can also impact the infrastructure which we have around. So prolonged exposure to high noise levels can cause deafness or uh, partial hearing loss. Noise can also change the character of the landscape or historical setting um, and it can also affect the property value. So there can be economic impact also and then also the community atmosphere might change and the quality of life might change. So uh, th there are several uh, impact which you can see here. So noise may also affect the wildlife as said, the domestic animals and in certain cases um, in um, uh, EIA uh, there might be need to include specialists to undertake these studies. So uh, in many of the uh, EIA we see that not much focus is given on wildlife. Uh, we will uh, study this uh, particular segment in detail in the method section as well. So uh, we see that in uh, while we uh, 
uh, evaluate noise, uh, we have certain sets of uh, guidelines which are there and emphasis is also given by WHO uh, which have identified noise uh, uh, as one of the second largest environmental risk to public health uh, and it is uh, second largest after the air pollution. So, uh, they have also developed certain um, standards for this. Uh, we see that understanding and assessment process for noise is considerably well established in EIA uh, with available evidence of uh, the like you have computerized models which allow you to uh, model the noise impact. There is good understanding of how to assess noise in EIA uh, with uh, all the models available. So, if you uh, will think and reflect most of all development projects have noise impact. So, you cannot really think of any development project which does not have noise impact. So, you, you think of noise as generated during the construction activities, um, then it would be during the foundation work and maybe it can be because of the transportation also. Uh, which is like during the construction work. You may also think of noise which are generated during operational phase also such as uh, with the industries when it is an operating then you might also have noise from there. And also many time when projects are decommissioned, so when uh, they are demolished also you might have noise pollution. So, in almost all the assessments noise is considered. So, this is very, very key area you see that the second most important area of concern after air pollution. So, uh, uh, that was about the noise now looking at the transport impact. So, we see that transport is a key factor for any development project. It is important for accessibility uh, like for us uh, for any resident or the employees and the customer to move around the mobility aspect. So, every development project will have strong interlinkages with transportation. So, any project which comes up, so it is going to Im have impact on the transport so, the impacts uh, vary uh, with the nature of the project. So, depending on what kind of project is coming. So, project can be transportation itself, transportation project itself like uh, you might be uh, constructing highway, high speed rail or you may uh, generate transportation demand. Project can be of transportation uh, itself uh, like you can have highway, high speed rail and uh, these may also generate transportation demand. So, impact of both the types may vary in range. The impact vary with the nature of the project. Project can be transportation project itself. So, uh, that itself like you are building highway, high speed and rail or there can be another kind of project which generates transportation demand. So, in both the cases where it, your project is transportation itself and the other cases you are generating demand for transportation, in both the cases uh, the type of impact may vary and also may vary in the range. And they will have different types of environmental and social impact such as it will affect the noise level, air quality level increase or reduce the accidents rate or affect the accessibility. So, it could be both positive and negative as well. So, transport project can also have significant cumulative impact such as bifurcation of the habitats. So, uh, like if a road is going from somewhere or rail line is going then it might divide the two uh, divide the same area into two parts and they would disconnect each other. So, that kind of impact could also happen um, and then um, it might also lead to cumulative impact of like uh, in uh, changing land use and then changing density also. And uh, for transportation project usually EIA is required most in most of the countries by law. So, it is ve very well established domain. For other type of development where it is non transport uh, nature development such as if you are developing industry where you are developing factory or you are doing the large uh, real estate project uh, th that will all include considerable uh, consideration for environmental impact of transport due to movement of people and goods uh, generated during the like it would be generated during the construction period and also during the decommissioning period even during its functional period. So, we see traffic is increasing concern 
and traffic problems and its impacts are also increasing leading to air pollution to uh, delay. So, uh, this domain is well established uh, like both the areas uh, where you have the transportation or impact in transportation. So, they are both well established and um, established and you would find lot of methods to undertake this. Also, you, you would see uh, that uh, the geographical extent of impact of traffic is also quite large and then the problem at one place can influence the traffic performance at a very distant place also. So, if you think about the typology which we discussed in the initial phase of this lecture, uh, we did talk about the geographical extent of particular impact. So, for such kind of projects, you can have larger impact. So, both proposal for new in transport infrastructure and the travel generated by other development will cause environmental impact um, and uh, this uh, these can include noise, vibration, air pollution, impacts on biodiversity, community, um, severance, visual intrusion can also happen and then accidents uh, chances also increases. Uh, and uh, it's, it's very important that the good access is also provided for economic uh, regeneration. So, transportation is important so that it uh, because it connects and it is important for the economic purpose also. So, depending on the context many methods are available which uh, we shall see later. So, now uh, moving on to another uh, uh, domain of uh, uh, analysis impact. Uh, we see that uh, studies also consider landscape and visual uh, impact assessment. So, uh, let us try to understand the difference between the two. So, what is the difference between the uh, landscape impact and what is the difference uh, wh what is about the visual impact. So, uh, while we assess Im uh, impact on landscape, we try to indicate change in the landscape. So, uh, uh, we try to explain or describe how the character will change. So, what will happen there and then the quality of landscape will uh, change over there. So, the quality also the character also whereas, while we are assessing the visual impact. So, we see how visual impression of the landscape changes with the project. So, visual is like just looking at the uh, visual element of it, but then when you talk about landscape, landscape would be a broader concept which you are looking at. So, landscape uh, is a broader term and encompasses or connects with uh, like ecology, ecosystem services, heritage and uh, uh, it can also include historic uh, landscape and then also uh, like all the elements of residential uh, resources and safety and security. And uh, we see that number of countries protect some of the landscape by giving it designation also. So, so some landscapes are very sensitive, so they are given designation for their protection like we have enlisted like we have enlisted uh, eco sensitive areas. So, in this image you can see a uh, coastal ecological sensitive area of Gulf of Manar. You can see here other uh, you can see Sultanpur National Park, Haryana uh, this is also identified as eco sensitive zone. So, uh, if you think on it uh, like unlike others where you saw the air pollution you talked about water pollution noise pollution they are they are very quantifiable. So, uh, unlike them landscape and visual assessment what we are talking here is more of a qualitative in nature. So, the, uh, uh, it, uh, so the techniques and tools which you use here uh, differ a lot and there is no standards for these things. And uh, uh, what is the significance of this impact would also depend on the quantity of landscape and any designation on it. And uh, uh, it would also uh, depend on the, the community which is on the receiving side here. So, uh, understanding landscape, landscape is an important part of the quality of life uh, for people wherever in urban areas and in countryside, uh, in the degraded areas as well as in the areas of high quality, in areas recognized as being outstanding beauty as well as everyday areas. So, this is how the uh, landscape is defined. Uh, by the um, uh, European Landscape Convention. So, it is it's a very significant part of it and uh, a landscape provides a setting for uh, day to day lives also. So, uh, that way uh, it is important for various communities especially when we talk about the indigenous people here. 
So, uh, the projects uh, which we see can result um, in effect of landscape character or uh, quality and uh, uh, w the views experienced and uh, values of the local population. So, uh, landscape uh, effects can be described uh, in like the changes what are happening there, what kind of character changes happening, what kind of quality changes happening. So, while you do the assessment you look into that kind of area. So, uh, summarizing this uh, session and this lecture, we uh, looked into the typology of environmental impact. We also uh, introduced range of impact areas, uh, which are generally addressed through EIA process. Then we focused on the biophysical environment topics and in that we looked at air, soil, uh, uh, land geology, we looked at the water. Uh, component, how we look into, uh, lo, uh, how, uh, what do we look into it, flora and fauna and biodiversity and then we looked into noise level and then landscape and visual. So, these were the references uh, for this particular session and I have also uh, mentioned which is the key text for our reference here and these are the suggested watch and read for this particular session. Please feel free to ask questions, let us know about any concerns you have, do share your opinions, experiences and suggestions. Looking forward to interacting and co-learning with you while uh, delving into environmental impact assessment subject. Thank you.